Welcome to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast, where you get unconventional insights into wealth building and retirement that actually work. Discover data-driven strategies and learn from a wealth of experience so that you can take your retirement to the next level. Now, here's your host. He was once bitten by a harbor seal. The income engineer, Craig Strom. Okay, we are live again with Personal Pension Radio. Joined uh, actually b- over the phone on the other side of the country by David Johnson from thedayyouretire.com. David, how you doing? Very good, Craig. Good morning. That's outstanding. So tell me, what's the world look like on the other side of the country right now? It's sunny and warm this morning. <laughs> We're going to get up to 83 today, so all is well in Georgia. All is well in Georgia. I love that. I actually just I just love Georgia personally. I've got clients who actually live out there in Georgia, and and uh, when they said, uh, "Would you like to Would you like to take some blueberries home?" I thought, "Well, sure. Where do we do that?" And they pointed to this what looked like to me a small tree outside in the front yard. And I said, "Well, yeah." And they said, "Well, let's go get some." And that tree just happened to be their giant blueberry bush. So Georgia is a special place for me. <laughs> There's, uh, yeah, there, there is some great blueberry picking all around. <laughs> that's that's the uh, the standard of an awesome state is uh, do we have great <laughs> blueberry picking, right? That's right? That's outstanding. Well, let me make sure that I do the introduction. Personal Pension Radio, uh, we're broadcasting here from the 95th floor of the Personal Pension Formulation Tower. We're in South Corona, and... Personal Pension Radio is a show focused on bringing together the experts you need to help you build and protect your wealth and, and most importantly, protect your lifestyle today and generationally, making sure that we can actually pass that, that lifestyle and the, and the world that we enjoy today onto our family and grandkids and so forth. And... When we talk about experts, uh, David, gosh, I'm not sure when you and I met, how many years ago it was, but I got to tell you, if there's somebody who is passionate about the work he does in, in doing exactly that, helping families build and protect their wealth and, and pass it on, uh, David is that guy, and I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Well, I'm, I'm honored that you asked, and you are right, that I am... Uh, I am passionate about this. I do care a lot about it. I think it matters. I I think that the financial decisions that we make today will actually echo for generations. I think they will have a direct and profound impact on our lives now, but that also our kids' and grandkids' lives will be affected by the next few financial decisions that we make. Now, I can't, I can't agree more. I'm actually uh, reading a book right now. I'll need to share that with you. It's, uh, it is Prosperity in the Age of Decline by Alan and Brian Bouillot, and uh, it talks about the next 15 years. We've got some really serious economic things happening in the next 15 years, which is our kids' future, which is our future, but we talk about helping our clients and helping our family be prepared uh, I mean, that is exactly it. Uh, I like to start off the show here when I've got a guest like yourself with a favorite quote. And uh, I had asked you about this favorite quote uh, early on. Uh, I thought it was a great one. Uh, why don't you lay it on us? It's from one of my mentors, Wayne Cotton, who if there was a life insurance hall of fame, he would be in it. He's from uh, Western Canada. And he says, if you have a problem, make it a procedure, and it won't be a problem anymore. And I think actually he got that from Ben Feldman, who is one of the all-time industry greats. Um, but that, that, to me, is something that has application in, in business, but also in our day-to-day life. I think that has application in your relationship with your kids. If, if there's a problem, try to figure out how to make it procedural. Uh, oh, if you don't spend I agree. enough time with your kids, figure out a way to just schedule it in so that it happens automatically. My wife and I have talked about that just recently um, with with each other. So, no, I uh, totally, I totally agree. I actually, it's an interesting you say it as a as a member as a matter of family. I had actually heard uh, a story that it originally sounded kind of sad that uh, a father was 
uh, you know, just due to family changes and things that happened in their lives, he ended up with a job that was nearly a two hour commute, nearly a two hour commute just to get one way to his job. So he lost a lot of time with his son. He had and ultimately what ended up working out really interesting was they found a, a school that would accept the, his son near his job. So every day they ended up spending time together in the car, driving back wow, and forth yeah. to his work, dropping him off at school and picking him up. It, it, yeah. it, you make it a system, you make it a process. Right. That's fantastic. No, I yeah. love that. Speaking of family, tell me about yours. I mean, I know the family, but uh, let's tell the listeners a bit about your family. You've got quite a crew. Yeah, I'm I'm married. Uh, my wife and I this summer will have been married 16 years, and we have three kids. Our daughters are 14 and 12, and my son is nine. Um, so my my kids all go to school at our church. My wife teaches kindergarten there, and so uh, that that's kind of home base for us. Um, so we're we're at a I think we're at a real fun stage of life. We're we're running around all day. <laughs> well, you've got to got that nice uh, yeah, that nice piece right there that right now your kids might actually kind of like it that your uh, wife uh, that's Anne, right? Right. You yeah. might they might actually yeah. like it that she's at school, but uh, they're getting to the age where about 15, 16, they may not like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're going to high school next year, so that's that's the big next fun exciting thing for us. Now, how about you, background-wise, uh, education-wise? I know you're passionate about collegiate sports, but uh, what's your background? Yeah, I am a fan of the Georgia Bulldogs, and I am a fan of the Atlanta Falcons. And right now, now what has been fun this year, you know, the Atlanta Hawks are rocking and rolling. Um, so me and the kids have really gotten into the Hawks. That's been fun. Uh, <laughs> but edu- educationally, I grew up here in metro Atlanta, and spent four years at Wheaton College in the western suburbs of Chicago and uh, graduated from there with a business degree and um, actually got licensed in the life insurance and financial services business after my sophomore year of college. Um, so I was telling somebody the other day, I, if I were to write a book on how to graduate from college without any friends, Point one would be spend your last two years selling permanent life insurance door to door on campus. <laughs> hey, that's uh, but but the, the the difference between you and unfortunately a large percentage of college kids coming out nowadays is you actually came out with a job that you can make money and, and make a living and help people with, right? Right, right. You know, a lot of people that get into the business are concerned about alienating their friends and such. So I just dealt with that early on by alienating everybody very, very early. <laughs> now, I love that. That's fantastic. So now, did you automatically now I know that your father has been in the business. We're going to talk about him later, but uh, that he's been in the financial services world uh, while you were you know, young. Did you automatically yeah. just uh, step right in the door with him and it was just a cakewalk? How did that work out? Well, so, and actually, I'm third generation. His dad got started in 62, and my dad joined him in 67. And when I was 16 years old and getting my driver's license, and I was making $4 an hour picking up rocks in the sun at a country club, uh, my dad said, hey, come, come work at the office, and I'll pay you $10 an hour. And so that summer, I started working in the office, and and that actually is it for me. I I have never put together a resume. I've never been on a job interview. Um, this is it's the only thing I know anything about. Uh, it it certainly is not a. It, it has been. It, it's very difficult to build a clientele in this business. Um, so that has has been and continues to be very difficult. Um, but. But I love it. It's it's the only thing that I know, um, and I do love what we do. I, I love I love the end result. Um, th- those those times that we're able to get to the end result, I love the end result. Well, even the tough times. I mean, I have to say. I mean, I've had experiences, and I'm sure you have. Uh, it's one of my questions I wanted to ask you today. But uh, I'll lead in with this: that I mean, I've had experiences, for example, where the type of planning we do is is oftentimes 
building that wall of protection around a family's financial house and then helping them build the house. And in the meantime, the world throws us, you know, an earthquake or uh, a hurricane or something that rattles the house. And if we've built it right, we're actually able to be there to help that family get through a very difficult time. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I have only been in the business 20 years, and most people who have been at it 20 years have actually not delivered too many death claims, but but I have delivered a handful, um, and th- that that kind of is the moment, right? That that's the point of all of this, is when when a person comes to you and says, "My goodness, what do I do now?" Right. And to be able to say, truly, it, it's going to be okay. At, you know, at that moment, everybody that they know is bringing over potato salad and offering to mow the grass for the next month or so. Right. And and we come in with a seven-figure tax-free check that that actually solves the problems. Right. It doesn't bring someone back, but it also it takes away the stress and the financial worry that that comes along with that traumatic event. And it's it's powerful. It's extremely powerful stuff. I'll, t- I'll tell you what else at that moment. We are the only person involved at that moment who is not taking from the surviving spouse. They they spend time meeting with their CPA. They spend time meeting with their attorney. They spend time meeting with all kinds of people. All of those people are billing them by the hour. We show up with a check. uh with nothing withheld for us, we, nobody gets paid at the end except for the the beneficiary. Right, the people so, who need it most. Yes, right. Now it's 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 actually it is something that I I have personally. You know, I'm 17 years in, and I have to say it's unfortunate, but I've been there. I've been through those situations, and it is. It is one of those things that reminds me in my work, you know, in the life insurance and financial services world that this is extremely important work that we do. It's tough. It's not easy all the time because, let's face it, folks most of the time spend uh, more time planning their next vacation than they do planning their retirement or protection plans. Right. Right. But it's still extremely gratifying to know that you are the one that can be there to actually make you know, that huge impact. The piece that I wanted to transition to, though, is that for me, one of the, and I want to ask you this, I mean, for me personally in my practice as a, as a financial advisor, one of the greatest uh, kind of evolutions has been this, this shift towards planning and preparing for that maximum lifestyle and retirement and realizing that things like life insurance and 401ks and business assets and all of those things, when properly balanced together, they all create a scenario where somebody can have that maximum lifestyle. So the conversation for me has shifted to You don't have to die to make this life insurance and this 401k and all of these things work out for your family. Uh, Tell me in your situation, kind of how do you feel about that as you've seen that transition in your own practice? Well, I I named my website thedayyouretire.com because that, that is the moment in life that I try to help my clients and friends focus on. And that, that's the moment where I want to have the most value for them. The prior generation, and I love that your podcast is Personal Pension Radio. This was not an issue in prior generations. There was no need to overly plan or worry about the day you retire right? because you had, you had a pension. Right. 65 plus percent, 67 percent of Americans actually had a pension. So you, you show up and you retire, and there's no real big decision to make. Uh, the, the decision really is just how do I, at what income level do I want my pension? There were a couple of different options there. Today's retiree 
which by the way, for the person who is retiring today, I think it's difficult for us to do a whole lot. My focus is on the person who is still two to three decades out from that, who is going to retire with a significant amount of assets, and that's it. They're, they're going to have a large cash balance that they need to then figure out, what do I do with this? How do I turn this into income? Right. Um, and if we can if we can spend time today talking about the decisions and options that are going to be on the table on the day you retire, we can put plans in place now to prepare for that. No, I, I totally agree. I think that you, you've touched on something that we've covered here on the show a number of times. That is that as as you look at, I mean, we'll we'll take the uh, the 401k statement. That's what most people see today as that primary yes. retirement driver. If we take that 401k statement and uh, we had read an article on the show uh, a couple of episodes ago um, for a uh, million dollars in a 401k statement and. Uh, as you work towards retirement, that number is important to you. You keep looking at the statement. You see a million dollars. But on the day you retire, do we really care if there's a million dollars in there? Or are we now more concerned about the paycheck that hits our bank account when our work check stops? Yes. As I say in every client meeting, we don't save $2 million in our 401k so that one day we can buy something that costs $2 million. Right, we, right. We do it so that that $2 million can turn around and pay us income that will replace the income we had previously been earning while we were working. Another question that I, that I ask in every client meeting, I say, Mr. Client, which would you rather have at retirement? Would you rather have $3 million in your retirement account that generates $120,000 a year of income, or would you rather have $2 million, a third less, that generates $160,000 a year of income, a third more? And everyone said, I, I would rather have the second one. I'd rather have $2 million that generates one hundred sixty, and we'd rather have it for multiple reasons. One is that I think that takes a lot of the pressure off. I was just going to say that. Uh, do, you, do you feel that it feels like it must take a huge amount of relief off your client when you're when you say that, right? Because the right, yes. the idea of Especially saving another million dollars is that's a right. that's a daunting uh, task. I especially when I'm speaking to the fifty-year-old who says, I mean, I. I before we got on the call this morning, Craig, I had been on a call with a 52-year-old, uh, hopefully soon-to-be client this morning. Today was our first conversation. He's 52 years old. He said, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit behind for right. retirement. So, And I hear that over and over from the late 40s, early 50s uh, demographic. I feel like I'm a little bit behind. All right, so wouldn't it be great news to know? that you could generate a third more income from a third less assets while eliminating risk. No, absolutely. Yeah, see, that's exactly yeah. it, that you take the stress off of that. Yes, yes. So we're, we're taking stress off of the accumulation stage so, so that when you're 57 and you hear that the stock market went down a lot yesterday, it's not as big of a deal because you're not having to hit as big of a number. And then we are taking significant risk uh, pressure off in retirement because most of the income that we're able to generate for our clients is contractually guaranteed. Oh, that's a, that's a great, great observation. I was actually I had a similar conversation yesterday afternoon that, you know, it's funny. It's not e it's not even a, a fair. I mean, if you were going to put odds on it, you know, what are the chances that somebody says I would rather have non guaranteed income when I retire? It's not even right. close. Every time right. I ask, which do you prefer? You know, majority right. of your income to be guaranteed or do you want to take take a risk? Right. So right. it's that's that's great when you when you think about this and, and think about your experience, you know, with with clients entering retirement. I mean, I'm sure you've had a variety of different experiences with uh, with 20 years uh, now in the business. 
you know, what's your experience been with, with clients entering retirement? I, I won't tell the whole long story of how this came to be, but two years ago, for a very concentrated period of time, for about six months, I was almost daily in front of people who were entering into retirement. So I got a just day after day, very clear vision of, of how people make their financial decisions as they are crossing that threshold from working to having their assets pay them. And what was amazing to me was that as I went through different income options with in every situation, the first question that the client asked me was, what happens with this plan when I die? Oh, really? Yeah. Which I spend a lot of my time working with people in their 30s, and all I hear from them is, when I'm 70, I won't be concerned with that anymore because I'll have other assets. <laughs> Interesting so, change of perspective, isn't it? So, so, yeah, so here I was at the other end of the spectrum talking to person after person after person. Okay, David, here I am. Here's my half million dollars. I'm ready to retire. How do I turn this into income? I say, well, here's one option. We could do this. That would generate this much. First question, what happens when I die? Right. Well, what would happen when you die is, all right, so what's the next option? And ultimately, oh, this is what uh, really opened my eyes. Ultimately, in almost every circumstance, the retiree was willing to take a dramatic reduction in income of up to a third of the income that was available to them in order to leave something behind to somebody when they die. Right. I, I have to say I've seen that myself personally. There's a, um, one, of the, one of the many things that we have here in the state of California as uh, the number one position. I mean, we hold the number one highest taxes in the country. We, we have the highest, uh, highest number of IRS audits uh, in the state of California. Yay. And one of the other things we have is the highest pensions for uh, civil servants, uh, public employees. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I have routinely worked on retirement planning with a fireman, for example, who will take a reduced pension option to leave money behind guaranteed for their spouse. And when we run the numbers, I ran one recently, David, that over his retirement years, the amount of money that they will have given up to make sure that his wife never has a loss of income will be over $900,000. Yes, and, and that's a person who, during his working life, gave up on an annual basis maybe 1% of his income, maybe, to make sure that his family would be okay if he died. And then he crosses the threshold into retirement, and without even thinking twice, he starts giving up 25% of his income to do the exact same job. Yes. And he's giving up 25% at a time when he needs the income more than ever. If, if I was giving up a significant percentage of my income today to protect my family— well, today I'm still working. I, I, if I need to go find more money every year, I, I, could, I can find a way. I can work harder. I can find those new opportunities. Right. You go, into you go into retirement, and those options aren't there. And so it's at the time that you need it the most that you start giving up massive amounts of your available income just to try to make sure that there's something left for somebody at your death. Right. And it's it, yeah, totally, exactly. It's totally unnecessary. If it had been dealt with, if, if that had just been known that that was the decision that was going to be made on the day you retire, if you had just known that those were the options and decisions that were going to be on the table, if you had known that decades prior, and it can be known. It, it, this, 
these decisions have been consistent for generations. Nothing's changed. If you had known that decades prior, you could have put plans in place to totally prepare for that. See, that actually goes to a question that I had that, that you made me think of here is that they were as you look at this conversation that you had, what have you really, what have you learned from that? What have you learned from that experience that you now have incorporated into your practice today? So what I, what I am trying to help my friends and clients grasp today, decades out, is that that day is coming. Um, one thing one thing that they teach you in uh, basic sales skills is that you have to help the customer feel the pain. Right. The problem is, my wife and I were talking about this the other day. I said, honey, the, the problem is the pain that I am describing is totally real and is totally going to be felt by the people that I am talking to. But the problem is th they're not going to know it until it's almost too late to do anything about it. Um, so my, what I see as my job and my mission is just to help people try to get a sense that you, you're doing a great job of saving money today. You're, you're seeing your assets accumulate. That's all fantastic. But what, what is the point of all of this? The point of this, like you said, Craig, it's not just to see that balance. It's not just to say, hey, I've got a million and a half in my 401k. We've got to be able to turn that into income. Right. If you don't and, have the option to be able to, to turn that into the ATM machine that you're retiring from, then you're in trouble. Then, then you're in trouble. It, it is, yes. And there are very, very easy, simple steps that can be put in place. It's not hard. It is, I think, almost it is too easy. Um, but it, it is tremendously easy. It's a very simple plan that can be put in place decades out that will bring you to that place with the ha having the world by the tail with every option available to you. No, that's a great, way, not, to, that's a great it, way to put it. And, and I don't mind giving it away. It's not that hard. What, what did I say that everybody, when they reach retirement, what's their first question about every retirement income decision? What happens when I die? Right. Well, well, what if that person could arrive at that moment and not worry about that? What if that question was removed? What if there was no concern about what happens when I die? Then, then the world is available to you. Well, yeah. the only way for that to be the case is to have life insurance on the day you retire and to have life insurance that you know is going to go forever. Right, and the thing is that uh, it was a conversation that I had again just yesterday with some folks that they that they were looking at pension decisions, right, that, that uh, you've got a pension out there and the pension was going to be, oh, I think it was three or four hundred dollars a month less, three to four, I think it was about four hundred dollars a month less in order for this gentleman to leave money behind for his wife if he were to die before her. So his pension decision said, here's X amount of dollars, and here's an amount that's $400 less. And that will guarantee that we'll leave money behind for his wife. What he didn't realize is that his pension was essentially a life insurance purchase decision. It's not even essentially. That's all it is. Period. It's just a, life, a life insurance, insurance decision. Policy. Right. He's buying a life insurance policy from a life insurance company. Basically. For $400 a month. Yes. And he's buying a life insurance policy with his basically from his pension company that has no value to his heirs, that he has no control over, that... That's irrevocable. Irrevocable. You never get any of the money back. So and and that has an unknown future benefit. The, the benefit starts at his death and stops at his wife's death. So we we have no idea. Everybody plays out in their mind this horrific situation where he dies the next day and she lives twenty five years. That's not how it plays out in most cases. 
Most of the right. time, they both, they both live 15 to 20 years and die within a couple of years of each other. In which case, he gave up $400 every month forever in order for her to get some small amount that most likely at the end does not even add up to the total amount that he gave up. It's, a, it's absolutely, it's a fantastic racket for the pension company and just goes to the point that we're going to make that decision, right? And, and we even make yeah. it if we don't have a pension. If we don't have a pension, we, I've seen it with folks where they will tend to take a lower income from their assets, substantially lower income from their assets, to make sure that they don't worry about running out of money for somebody left behind. Because they yep. have no other plan. And, and where where you can just so clearly see that is when you present to the retiree an option that would dramatically increase their income. In most cases, more than double it. And, and eliminate guarantee, and eliminate the risk. And guarantee it forever. And they say, what happens when I die? And you say, nobody gets anything when you die. And, Craig, I have almost been thrown out of people's homes. Where they say, <laughs> How could you even present something like this to me? Well, because you need income. You, you tell me, Mr. Retiree, what, what is, why did you save all this money? What, what does IRA stand for? I say this in every client meeting. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. That money was designed to pay income to the individual who saved it during their retirement. And most people, because they arrive at retirement, and this was their plan all along. This is what they told their financial advisor when they were 32. They said, I'm going to have a little bit of life insurance for a little while, but I'm going to build up my IRAs, and then I won't need life insurance anymore. So most people arrive at retirement and treat that account as if it was named family estate planning and wealth transfer account. <laughs> That's right. That is not the name of the IRA. That is not what IRA stands for. That is that is a great observation. You go into that situation with the proper preparation and it's a whole different it's a whole different scenario. So so that leads to this question. I mean how can our, our generations, as we're talking to the folks today, how can this generation and these, these, this next round, uh, these folks that are coming up to the doorstep of retirement, how can they be better prepared? All right, so uh, I, I give it all away on my website, thedayyourretire.com. So I, I don't mind saying it here. We need to be saving 15% of our income into something. And one-third of that needs to be going towards permanent life insurance. And the other two-thirds needs to be going into whatever, really, I, I, as I say to my customers, put that wherever you get your kicks. If you enjoy investing in the 401K, that's great, especially if you're getting matching funds. You absolutely should be investing there. If you like investing in real estate, if you like investing in startup companies, uh, wh whatever it is, Put 10% into whatever you feel like right. and just rock along. Put 5% into permanent life insurance and let you and I reconvene in 30 years. <laughs> and you will have significant assets that you built up just on your own. You didn't need my help or anybody else's help to do it. You, you will have accumulated significant assets over there. You'll have a very large life insurance policy that most likely no more premiums will be due on it. You'll have a huge death benefit that's guaranteed to pay so now you can you arrive at the doorstep of retirement and you don't as you're going through your retirement income options you don't ever have to say what happens when i die it's okay to disinherit everybody from your retirement assets because again it's called individual retirement account you can use that thing the way it was meant to be used which is to pay pedal to the metal income to you because you know that if you die, if the worst happens and you die early, the life insurance is there. Most likely you're going to live a long time. You enjoy all of the income from your assets while knowing the whole time that your family is protected. And then an increasing tax-free amount gets paid out at death and replaces everything. Yeah, and that goes back to what you said earlier. See, when you come to retirement and you say if you had a $3 million account that pays out $120,000, 
or a $2 million account that pays out 160 Yes. I mean, that's what we want. But, but if yep. you add what you just said here, we get the $160,000 income from the $2 million. And what you're saying is there's also this guaranteed actuarial asset, this life insurance that even boosts the legacy beyond. Yes. Yes. And it makes it, it makes it possible for the $2 million to pay that much. In order for the $2 million to pay that much, we have to be okay disinheriting everybody. And the only way we're going to be okay disinheriting everybody is if we've got something else there to, to protect everybody, and that's the life insurance. That guaranteed legacy piece is really a permission slip to spend your retirement assets to the max, is what yes, you're saying. let them do what they were designed to do. The product is properly named. It is an individual retirement account. That is, it is meant to do one thing. It's not meant to be left to your kids. It's not meant to be left to your wife. It is meant to pay income to the individual who saved it during his retirement. But if it's the only thing you got, it's going to have to do five things. And it wasn't designed to do five things. That's a great point. It, it really was. It was not. To, it was designed to pay to to replace income in retirement. It wasn't designed to uh, pay estate taxes. It wasn't designed to leave a legacy per se. Especially when you think about legacy today, that the uh, the government, you know, the the president recently has been uh, talking about removing even some of the basic benefits of passing on retirement accounts. Hmm. Right. So. That is an outstanding point. When, you, when we talk about being better prepared, does this, because here's a big question that comes up for folks. You know, David just says we need to put X amount of dollars into investments and X amount of dollars into life insurance. Oh, that's going to cost me more money and I'm going to have to sacrifice my lifestyle today. What do you right, say to except that? It, except it doesn't because, at least for our end of the plan, our end of the plan is simply based on a redirection of money that's already being saved, okay. assuming that you're already saving money. Um, if, if, if the customer is making really good money and saving almost nothing, then he should be saving more. So he, he's not – that's a conversation that I have often with clients. Mr. Klein, you've told me where you want to get to. It is impossible to get where you want to go with the amount of money that you're saving now. So I need to know from you how much more are you willing to save. Because it, it can't be done. Um, but assuming that the, that the customer is saving money now, all we're talking about is a redirection. We're not talking about taking fewer vacations, uh, taking your kids out of private school. We're, we're not talking about any of that. Uh, but there... There is today money that you are saving. If you're saving money into your 401k, the only reason that you're doing that is to generate retirement income. Exactly. That, that money can't do anything else. So if, if we can incorporate a life insurance policy into the overall plan and generate more retirement income, then, then that's a better plan. Since the only point of the 401k was to generate retirement income, anything else that generates more is better. Right. If the so life insurance that. plan allows you to, in total, draw more income in retirement, do we really care what it's called or are we more concerned about what it does for us? Right. Right. And by the way, just it also does some other things. So it it increases your income in retirement. So it, it does a better job of the only thing the 401k does, but then it does some other things as well. Right. So. Now, that's powerful stuff. I mean, I think that, that, that I was also reminded as we were talking about this that, that you've actually had some recent very personal experience uh, seeing this plan in action, actually seeing yep. the, exactly what you teach clients. Yes. And, and yes. just for the record, I want to say it one more time for everybody listening, thedayyouretire.com, excellent website, some great information. You can actually kind of meet David in person there on his website. But tell me a little bit about your father's story uh, because it's, it's, 
it's basically a a proof positive that this stuff works. Yes. So my dad retired uh, formally from our business. It kind of happened over the last two years. It was a process, but over the last two years, he has retired. And he had, on the day he retired, he had some liquid savings, real estate, retirement accounts, and life insurance. And the big question was, okay, now I have these retirement accounts. I have IRAs. What do I now do with these? And what he decided to, option number one, obviously, is to go with the the default plan, which is to live off the interest, maintain the accounts, pull withdrawals out every year. Right. But every economist and planner would say that a retiree should not withdraw more than 4% of their assets in any one year. So he could draw 4% income off of those if he wanted to and just maintain the account. What he chose to do instead was on the day he retired, he purchased with all of his retirement assets a financial instrument called a life income annuity, which the term annuity can be confusing because it can mean a lot of things, but an income annuity is one in which the retiree hands over to a life insurance company their retirement account. And my dad took all of his retirement accounts over the course of about six months and handed all of them to a life insurance company. And in return, he gets a paycheck every month. The income is guaranteed for life, so he has eliminated the, the biggest risk in retirement, which is longevity risk, the risk right. of outliving your money. If he lives to 104, he'll get a check every month. And by the way, as I have shared his plan, and, and his plan is laid out in detail at my website, as I have shared his plan with people, I've had people say, well, I mean, this sounds like a plan, David, that would work well if you lived a long time. And my point is, if you're not going to live a long time in retirement, then we don't need to be spending so much time and effort planning for it. Right. If I'm going to retire at 68 and die at 71, I don't need a plan for that. I can I can find my way through that on my own. But if I'm going to retire at 68 and live to 95, I better have my stuff together. And right. I better have a plan in place that's going to run for a very, very long time. So the income annuity by itself solves that. It pays income every month until he's 104. So it eliminates market risk, longevity risk. I think it eliminates long-term care risk because if he ever needs long-term care, the income from the annuity can pay for that every month while he's in the facility. He's got a guaranteed paycheck, and I'll tell you right now from experience, long-term care facilities more and more, they prefer people who have guaranteed paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. So, and... For current retirees, it pays 8% income. So he's doubling his income, eliminating all the risk, except for the – so why doesn't everybody buy one of those on the day that they retire? If I can generate $160,000 of income from $2 million instead of $120,000 from $3 million, why doesn't everybody do that on the day they retire? And the answer is the income will stop entirely on the day my father dies. Right, gotcha. Meaning, my mother, who is three years younger than my dad and has not worked a day in 40 years, has been completely disinherited from my dad's retirement accounts. My three brothers and I have been completely shut out of dad's retirement accounts. So why did he feel comfortable doing that? He loves my mother. He would never do anything that would jeopardize her financial situation, especially at this stage of their life. Right. So why did he feel comfortable doing that? It is because decades prior, he had put in place permanent life insurance that was equal in value to his retirement accounts. So if the worst happens and he dies this year, which is unlikely, he's in good health, feeling good, but if the worst happened, My mom would lose the income from the annuity, but she would gain the tax-free life insurance money. She could turn right around and do the exact same thing and create her own guaranteed lifetime income stream. Yeah, she has no no risk. She has zero risk. So we're fine if the worst happens. 
but probably the worst is not going to happen. Probably they're both going to live 15 to 20 years and die within a few years of each other, in which case both of them together enjoy all of the income from the annuity, and the life insurance amount is increasing. Every, there's an increasing tax-free amount that's going to be paid out one day. Oh, that's powerful. I, that, that's absolutely I, powerful. What, what inspired, what really got me revved up to put that website together, Craig, was a phone call that I had. I'm the oldest of four boys. A phone call that I had with my youngest brother last fall. Because my dad had gone around and met with all four of us and just said, hey, I want you to know, here's my financial situation. I just want you to know what I've got. Uh, in case I die, I, I just want you to know what I have. Um, and my youngest brother called me last fall. He said, man, I just met with dad. He said, you know, dad's in pretty good shape. I, I said, yeah, he is. And I said, you know, Phil, if, if he lives another 10 years, it's going to be even better. And if he lives another 20 years, it's really going to be great. And it just it struck me, Craig, I, don't, I think probably I'm the only 40-year-old in America talking about his parents in their early 70s saying, yes, it's okay now, but if they can live another 10 or 20 years, it's really going to be amazing financially. <laughs> because the other way around is uh, I really hope that mom and dad are not living with us. Yeah, right, yes. So they get income. They receive income every month forever without doing anything. You know, I, I shared this strategy with somebody recently, a, a friend of mine. He said, you know, I think my retirement strategy is to focus on rental properties. I said, all right, that's fine, but that's like saying that my retirement strategy is I'm going to sell life insurance policies. You, right. You still, have, you still have to work. What What I'm talking about is income that you get paid without changing out of your pajamas. That's a great one, right? You don't even have to take off your slippers. Yes. And no matter what you do, you could blow through it every month. And no matter what, you're just another couple of weeks away from the next big payment. Right. At any particular moment. Forever. Now, so, so that's powerful. So I... I have never been as intimately involved with anyone's financial plan as I am with my own father's. And I look at his plan and I say, where does this thing go wrong? Where do they get in trouble? Where, where, does, this, where does this run out? Where, where are the potential – where do we get hurt here? And I don't see it. No, it, it sounds like you actually have taken – you've taken and, and utilized the assets for what they're specifically designed to do. The retirement yeah. assets are providing the income. The life insurance assets are providing the security and covering the decision to go get the income. And question for you, as as your dad has officially been retired now, uh, you know, just tell me what have you seen in him and in your mom uh, as far as kind of the have you seen any changes in kind of the way that they 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 look, sound, feel? What have they been up to? You know, an interesting thing, you know, obviously Dad was in this business, and an interesting thing about the life insurance business is that you can do it forever, and a lot of people just keep going forever. Um, and I, my, in fact, my grandfather, he, he was in the office a couple of days a week until he was 87. Wow. Um, and, and, he, and he died at 87. Um, my dad, and so I, fig I figured that would be the same thing. It is amazing the way that you can physically see how the the financial pressures of life have come off of his shoulders. And he's in here a couple of days a week, but he is the last one here and the first one to leave. Um, <laughs> and he, he is he has dialed way back. Uh, so. And he and mom are taking trips, but they've been taking trips for a long time. What I have observed with him is that the financial pressures of life have have just fallen off of his shoulders. Now, que quick it, question it for you, David. Glorious. Just because you're watching this so close, and you know, I I personally lost my dad at uh, when he was 58 years old, and and he had only gotten a few years into retirement. 
So I really haven't had the observational, you know, from that, you know, to be to be able to really see it in, in uh, that close up. Um, the question for you is. As you watch your parents go into, you know, the official really retirement stage and we think back to all of these financial entertainers and financial advisors and various magazines, they all tell us for decades, it's going to cost less when you retire. Life will cost less. You can live on less. I mean, how is your yeah. mom and dad's situation with them being officially retired, did all of their lifestyle expenses drop, you know, miraculously by 20 or 30 percent? No, zero. <laughs> well, um, I, all right, so first of all, just uh, conceptually, I, I, I think the natural condition of – the natural human condition is one of expansion. I, I think it is – it is unnatural to contract. I think it is unnatural to have something and then not have it. Uh, so whatever my income is, if, if truly, if it is $2 million a year, I am going to feel pain if that drops to a million seven. Right. I, I am used to $2 million. So... I, I, so no, th their expenses have not gone down. They've just been transferred to other things, um, and you know their, their desire is to. I, you know, Craig, I hear people say that inheritance, legacy, those types of things. Well, that's not important to me. I did it on my own. My kids can do it on their own. I gotta say, I totally disagree with that. Uh, it is a cold, mean, hard world out there, and you're the only person alive who is actually pulling for your kids. Right. Everybody else in the world is trying to tear your kids down, and you are your kid's best shot. And if your position is they're on their own, then good gracious they truly are they are on their own why would you want that well I, I want my children to have every advantage that i can possibly provide for them i want their life to be better than the next kids and why was it better it's because david johnson was their dad right now that's and, a great way to put it and and that is what my dad wants for us uh so anyway, that's no, that's actually a fantastic way to, you know, that leads into that idea of, you know, as you look at that tips and, you know, words of wisdom to leave with. It is so true that we we really are, you know, we're a family today, but we're a family long term and everybody is scraping to be at the top of a particular pile, whatever it might be, whether it's sports or professional or just just general and we've got to be there to help each other and as parents we are our kids best example yes we're their best advantage we're the best thing they've got going right now i think that's an awesome way i, th I love the story about your dad your mom and dad i know your dad fantastic couple and i, I love that they're doing really well and i think that's a great place to end today that with that that success message that if you're out there and you're listening to this, you have to know that retirement success and lifestyle success is not a product. It's not somebody selling you a 401k or selling you life insurance or the next real estate investment. It's a system, a strategy that has to be put in place in a balanced approach. And if you have a moment when you're not driving or running or wherever you are listening to this podcast, uh, David, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, my website is thedayyouretire.com. All of my contact information is there, but my email address is david at thedayyouretire.com. And my cell phone number, 678-643-8528. Obviously, that info is on the website. Um, I'm here in uh, northeast metro Atlanta suburbs in Peachtree Corners, 
and uh, yeah, I'll be, and I'm I'm licensed in about 30 states, and would be happy to help anybody any way I can. No, oh, fantastic. I really appreciate that, David. And, and and just for the record, everybody, David is very much like uh, we are. He is not bound by geography. So, David, work you work with clients and, and people all over the country, right? Yes, yeah. That's why I say I'm licensed in, I think, 30 states. And, uh, yeah, I am, could help anybody anyway. Outstanding. David, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you, I'm sure, on another episode. We'll probably need to actually get you back on the podcast. Really appreciate having you here. Real good. Thank you, Craig. Thank you for listening to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast. If you missed anything during the show, that's okay. We took the notes for you. Check the show notes for links, offers, and a full transcript. And don't forget to head over to personalpensionradio.com and download your free retirement income report. While you're there, we'd appreciate some iTunes love. Please leave us a fantastic rating on iTunes by going to personalpensionradio.com slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening.